making a Minecraft server for Bedrock Edition. That's what we're going to be covering in this video. Now, first things first, I do want to cover a few things. One, this is not a 24-hour Bedrock server. It's only going to be up and running when your computer is up and running. You also need a computer to run it. If you're playing Bedrock on a mobile device, you can play on this server, but you can't start this server on that device. You will need a computer. Windows or Linux, we're going to be doing Windows for this video in order to get your server up and running. And on top of that, you're also going to need a decent computer, right? Your computer is going to be running a server. That server is going to use resources. So you need a decent computer in order to be able to host the server as well as decent internet. And last but not least, this server is only meant for your friends, your family, people that you can trust. The reason for that is because it's using your own computer, your own internet, and anyone who gets the IP address of the server can do things like DDoS you, take your internet offline, and even figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates. So with that, this is only meant for your friends, your family, people you trust. What if you do want a server that you can start from a mobile device? What if you want a server that doesn't require you to have a good computer? What if you want a server that's up 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, that's public or private? It's up to you who plays on the server. Well, in that case, check out Apex Minecraft hosting at the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. There, you can start your Minecraft server and make it public or private. You don't have to worry about hardware because it uses Apex's hardware. You don't have to worry about internet connection because it uses Apex's internet. If you can play on other Minecraft servers out there, like popular servers like Mineplex on Bedrock, well, then guess what? You can play on an Apex server without any problems. You can also do things like add add-ons, add different mods and things like that to your server. And at Apex, if you want to get really technical, you can actually create a server that can be joined from both Java and Bedrock at the same time. And last but not least, on top of all that, we actually used Apex for all of our Minecraft servers. We love them, we trust them, and they have 24 hours, 7 day a week support should you have any issues with your Bedrock server. So again, you can check out Apex in the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to start your very own Bedrock Minecraft server quickly and easily and get things up and running without having to use a computer or anything like that. But nevertheless, what if you don't want to purchase a server with Apex, you want to host one on your own computer? Well, let's go ahead and get that done. First thing you want to do is go to the second link in the description down below. That will take you here. This is the Bedrock Dedicated Server Download. And once you're here, you want to come under the Minecraft Dedicated Server Software for Windows section. Agree to the ULA if you agree to it. We do. And then click Download. Then in the bottom left of Google Chrome, the download begin. You may need to keep or save the file, but this is on Minecraft.net. So it's 100% safe to do that. If you've downloaded Minecraft, you've accessed this website before. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and move this to our desktop. It's going to be found in our downloads folder. So just go ahead and open up File Explorer. And then from File Explorer here, you want to look, click on this PC in the left-hand sidebar and then go into your downloads folder. And here we have a Bedrock server zip or drive that to our desktop. Once this is on our desktop, you want to go ahead and right-click on it, then click Extract All, and then click Extract. It's going to then go through, extract some things, move some files, do everything that needs to get done, and then eventually it will have a new folder, or you will have a new folder, with your Minecraft Bedrock dedicated server files in it. One of the cool things about Java versus Bedrock is they kind of give you everything up front with Bedrock, at least most of the stuff, whereas with Java, you have to download one file, and then it downloads more files after that. It's really interesting. But anyway, I'll see you once this is finished unzipping, taking it a second here, and then once it is, we can get this server up and running, and we're also going to allow your friends to join it. There we go. I unfortunately didn't catch it in time, but the extraction is complete. We do now have a folder. We can delete the .zip file we downloaded. We don't need that. Let's go ahead and open up this folder and in here we'll be able to see everything to do with our server. The one thing that isn't in here is the world and that will generate when we start the server the first time. How do you do that? Well, you just double click on bedrockserver.exe and then the server is going to start right like so. If you get this pop-up, wait, it's a very important you do this. You want to make sure that you allow bedrockserver.exe to communicate on public and private networks and then click allow access. If you don't get that pop-up, it's probably okay, but just in case, if later on your friends can't join, you've port forwarded, everything is working as it should, for some reason your friends can't join, well then that might be it. You need to allow Minecraft Bedrock in Windows Defender. Nevertheless though, let's go ahead and join this server. You're the only person that can join the server at this point, but I think it is important that we go ahead and join it. That way you can see this is how you join and all of that stuff. Now. And on Java Edition, it's really easy to join a server on this at this point. On Bedrock, it's easy. It's just not as easy as Java Edition. So we've got both of these open, but before we actually do anything with them, let's minimize them. You don't have to close out of them. Just minimize them. And then come up to the Windows icons in the top left of my screen, probably in the bottom left of your screen or bottom center of your screen on Windows 11, and then type Run. You'll have this Run app here. 
open this up and then in here what you want to do is type in cmd and hit enter now i went that way you can also just type cmd in this uh right, this this right here and that will work um i forgot about that until i'd already shown you how to do it nevertheless in the command prompt though what we want to do is type ip con fig ip config and then hit enter now there's two numbers we need to grab here one we'll use later in the port forward actually we'll use both later in the port forward but one right now will let us join our server so let's go ahead and open up notepad and do that you can write these down it doesn't matter how you take notes of them but you do need to note them the first is the ipv4 address here which is 192.168.1.16 and then we also want to get our default gateway so this is our ipv4 and then we want to get the default gateway which in our case is 192.168.1.1. Now, if you do have a big long string of numbers and letters, as well as just numbers, you want to get to the default gateway that's just numbers. Usually it's on the second line, and you have a big long string of numbers and letters, and then under that you'll have the normal default gateway. But nevertheless, once you've got that, we can close out a command prompt. These are the numbers we need. Now, this IPv4 address, I'm going to go ahead and highlight and copy that because... We come back over into Minecraft, if we open our server back up, as well as Minecraft here, we click play, and then we go over to servers, and scroll down to the bottom, we'll actually be able to add this. Let me delete this server right fast. There we go, so if we click add server, and then we go ahead and name it, we'll just do local server. And then we paste in the server address there, and click save. You can also click play, but it's not going to load this server up. This is the server that's on our own computer, and you can only join this using Minecraft Bedrock on the computer that you're creating the server with. So as you can see, ping zero, online zero, join server, and we'll see it happen on the left-hand side here. We'll join on in. There I am, daily videos. Now, as I've joined into the server here, things are looking good. We have an x-ray texture pack installed. That's why that's happening. Let me go ahead and uninstall that real fast. There we go, x-ray uninstalled, and we are in a normal world here. Now, worth noting that you can only join this server this way. No one else can, and honestly, I would recommend you always join the server this way. Sometimes you can have issues if you try to use your public IP to connect to your own server uh, that's on your own computer. It can cause issues, but as long as your friends can join via that, that's okay. You should just always join using that IPv4 address that we just used. What about your friends, though? Well, in order for your friends to join the server, let's go ahead and disconnect from the server on Minecraft here, as well as stop this server. And the way to do that is just go ahead and type stop over here in the command prompt kind of window there, the server files, and it will close out of that. Now, in order to port forward on Bedrock Edition, what we're going to actually be doing is forwarding two ports, port 19, 132, and port 19, 133. Now, how do we do this? Well, we want to open up our browser, and this is where that default gateway comes in. So we want to open up a brand new tab, and then in the default gateway, what we want to do is go ahead and copy this and paste it up here at the top where you would normally type in, I don't know, your website, like the breakdown of the XYZ, youtube.com, something like that. Hit enter, and it will go ahead and open up some sort of a login box. Now, mine pops in from the top automatically. Yours may be in the center. Yours may, you know, be a pop-up like that actually is a new separate browser window, but some sort of login box will probably appear. Some of you will have something like Google Fiber or a Google router. If you have a Google router or a few of the other routers that are out there today, it's actually a bit different, and you'll need to download an app on your phone. Unfortunately, the process of port forwarding will be the same, but as far as the login process here for you, that will unfortunately be different. But nevertheless... This is your router's username and password. How do you find that? Well, we have an in-depth guide in the description that goes over exactly how to find your router's password. It goes over everything you need to know, these different methods, right? By method five, everyone's found it, but usually by method three, most people have found their router's username and password. It goes over everything, like I said, you need to do to get your router's password up and running and set up and all of that stuff and logged in. So I'm going to go ahead, log into my router, and I will see you once I've done so. There we go. We have logged into our router, and now from here, we need a port forward. I'm going to go over all of the basic terms and everything you need to know to get your port forward up and running. But we also have this guide, and this goes over how to port forward on all the most popular routers today. This in-depth video here, it covers everything. So go check that out. We also have a, uh, a text tutorial down here, and I have plans of updating this very, very soon. So it's just getting more and more valuable as time goes on. So go check out this video. It covers everything you need to know on port forwarding in depth. Once you've got that, though, we can come back over here and port forward for our Bedrock server. Now, what we're looking for is port forwarding. That can be an advanced, it can be in security, it can be in an administration tab. I've seen it be in an advanced tab and then an administration tab. It can be called apps and gaming or just gaming. It can be called apps and forwarding, port forwarding, port triggering, port forwarding slash port triggering. 
It can be in a security tab or it can be in like a, you know, networking tab. I've seen it everywhere. The thing that you need to know is it doesn't kind of matter what you do on your router. You can click around all you want. Just make sure that you don't save anything unless you're confident it is the port forward. So let's go ahead and click advanced. And then for me, it is in advanced again. And then it is in port forwarding slash port triggering. It could also be in the security tab. I've seen that very, very commonly. Now in here, what we want to do is go ahead and add a new port forward. In my case, that's going to be add a custom service is what it's called. Now for you, it could be something different, right? It could just be a big, long list of boxes. If that's the case, just use the first two for what we're going to do here. In other cases, you have to do an add new port forward, add a custom service, or set up port forward. I've seen it be a bunch of different things, but overall for me, it is add port forward or add custom service usually. Now, for service name here, we're going to do this as Minecraft Bedrock, and then we're going to actually put what the port is, which is 19132. Because we have to do this twice, it's important to identify that. For the protocol, we want to do TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. No matter what, you want to make sure this is both selected here. If you can't select both for whatever reason, do all of this twice. Do it once for 19.132, and another time for the second port, which is 19.133, both on the TCP and UDP, once for TCP, once for UDP. In most cases, though, you'll be able to select both of them. For the port, anything involving the word port, so external port, internal port, first port, second port, inside port, outside port. I have, There's so many things that routers call this, but for anything that says the word port on it, you want to enter in 19132 on your first port forward, the one we're doing now. So as you can see, we have done that now for both the external and internal port. And then for your internal IP address, this is going to be that IPv4 address we got earlier. So in my case, 192.168.1.16. Another option is you might have a dropdown list of some sort. If that's the case, go ahead and select it from the dropdown list. Right here it is for me. I could select it from this list as well. It's going to be the computer that you're starting your server on. Now we want to go ahead and apply, save, create, you know, add whatever you want to call it or whatever your router calls it, I should say, for that port. Now we need to do this one more time. We need to add another port forward. This time we're going to do everything exactly the same. We're going to name this Minecraft Bedrock, except we're going to change this to 19133. That's the port. So Minecraft Bedrock 19133. Again, we want to do this for both TCP and UDP. And then we again want to name this for the port 19133. Guess what? Anything involving the word port on the second forward is going to have that 19133. So inside port, outside port, external, internal, doesn't matter what they call it. Both of the things that have the word port and what they're describing needs to be this port. Again, you want to use the same IPv4 address we did earlier or select the same device you did earlier. Then click apply, save, create, whatever. And now the hard part's done. That's the hardest part is getting your port forward created. Now, all we need to do is get your public IP address, which you can find here. Of course, this is linked in the description down below. And this is your public IP. You can simply click on it to copy and boom, you've got it. But this is also a warning. This is why it's so important that you only give this to people you trust because you can see the information you can get from someone's IP address. It is also worth noting that Apex hides all this. So if you're starting a Minecraft server and you use Apex here, then it hides everything. You don't have to worry about it. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and come back over to our port forward because in some very few cases, but in some, you would need an external outside or public IP address section for your port forward. If that's the case, you can enter that now. 99% of people don't need that though. And we can go ahead and minimize our browser. And we want to go ahead and start our server back up by double clicking on the bedrockserver.exe. Once we do that, the server is going to start. Once the server is started, we can come over here and join. Now we've got this local server here, but we can also add a server and I'm going to name this the public IP. And then for the server address, we're going to go ahead and paste in our public IP there. Now we blurred this out on the website. We've also blurred it out here. You can only see 177. The reason for that is because you don't want to give this to everybody on the internet. Like when you're making a tutorial, you don't want to give this IP address out to everybody. So we'll go ahead and save here. It'll take a second, but then we will see that public IP will also locate and we'll be able to join it. Now, in some cases, you won't be able to join via your public IP. I mentioned that earlier, right? And that's very important to mention because if you can't join via your public IP, you can always join via this IP, which is the local host here. So anyway, this is taking a second and sometimes it will fail out after you've port forwarded. It needs a few minutes to propagate. So you can just kind of wait on that. And sometimes it will just fail. 
And you might be wondering, why would that happen? Well, the reason that would happen, and by the way, I just joined even though it hadn't loaded yet, and boom, we're in. You can see on the left-hand side here. And just to prove that this is the same server that we were using earlier, let's go ahead and delete these blocks, right? And then pull up my inventory. So I have four blocks of my inventory. That's what it looks like. Let's go ahead and close, save, and quit. And then we'll join via the local one we have set up here, the local server join it's going to then show that exact same world join us right on in now i can join via my public ip in some cases like i said you can't as long as your friends can same world as you can see and we'll switch back one more time that's all that matters now at this point your server is set up your friends can join it all of that stuff and don't be alarmed if for whatever reason it doesn't ping it for some reason it's not pinging here for me as you can see current ping is showing offline but if i click join server it joins right on in a bit odd, sure, but that's just kind of the weird thing about Bedrock servers. These servers, in my opinion, could be better supported. But nevertheless, thank you so much for watching, and that's how you can get your server up and running. Now, should you have any issues with your friends not being able to join, you've confirmed that it is an issue that your friends can't join. You can join via your local IP address, all that stuff. It could be an issue with your port forward. It could also be that Windows Defender issue that we had earlier, right, where it popped up and we had to select public and private. Well, if that's the case and you didn't select that, you might need to go into Windows Defender and I'll allow the Minecraft Bedrock server in order to allow your friends to join. It could also be a firewall on your router or even an antivirus on your computer that's blocking your friends from joining your server. However, you don't have to worry about any of this at Apex Minecraft hosting, which is why they're so awesome. By the way, to op yourself in your server, you come over here into the console, type op, and then whatever your username is, right like so, and I believe that should work. Actually, do you have to do underscore? It's been a while since I've used Bedrock servers. I am much more versed on Java. Unfortunately, I don't seem to know how to op myself. That is uh, that's kind of embarrassing. But nevertheless, should I make a video on how to op yourself? I could learn how to do it and pass it along to you guys. Uh, I think the space in my name is what's actually throwing me off there. But nevertheless, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more incredible content, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.